I picked up this box. Uh, how would I paint this version of Tao? And the guy at the store said, hey, here's some Corex white. Uh, you know, have fun with that. Now, as you can see, oh my God, I hope I don't drop this. See, I didn't give up right away. In fact, this is what I finished right before I quit. That's an important thing is to taper your expectations to what you can actually do to not make yourself quit. I know that a lot of people say that you should always paint the army you like because what happened to me is I did exactly that and I quit. However, I didn't quit for good after all as several months later, I was back. And so years later, we're painting another towel once again. Ironically, things started off with a disaster right away as I tried using some speed paints for his skin and realized it looked awful. I tried using some wet paint to brush it off and it just turned out awfully. So I used some Vallejo Luftwaffe uniform for the skin highlighting it with a bit of white but once again i pushed white a bit too much so i went back in with a bit of luftwaffe and since i had a little bit of a diorama mini base i decided to paint the guy as the imperial fist it's honestly quite ironic the fact that this scheme is the first one i painted and it just started off disasterly and i'm following the exact same colors i used previously which is going for the royal blue and then just highlighting with a bit of white I'm also using very thin version of this royal blue as when working with white I prefer just taking my time as much as possible and avoid any mistakes. I knew that I wanted a lot of the parts of the armor to be blue so I kept going around the model trying to find different things that would actually look kind of interesting in the blue color. Then it took some of the royal blue and mixed it with white. It did have a tiny bit of Luftwaffe but it wasn't enough to impact the paint too much. Uh, the white paint I was using for this I'm pretty sure was Liquitex acrylic gouache white. I applied a few quick highlights just going in a few vertical lines but I decided to save most of them for later. For the bronze paint I decided to use Vallejo metal color copper mixed in with the green stuff world bronze. I can honestly say this is definitely my favorite metallic pigment and I really do wish that they would make a lot more of these as th I mean there's just nothing like them. I decided to apply it to the chest area, the weapon circles and a few areas on the legs as well. Luckily, the metallic was also turning out very bright, which is awesome because once I apply the streaking grime in a later step, it'll dull it down, but not enough to kill some of that really cool shine. I'm also not sure which parts of the backpack are supposed to be what, so I just added a little bit of bronze in there just to make it more interesting and giving him a cool belt buckle. And using some grim black for the armor. This was definitely the part I was dreading the most was actually painting black over white since any small mistake I would make would just result in a large amount of time trying to fix it. I decided to opt in for speed paint which is essentially equivalent of uh, contrast black templar because it would apply much easier and smoother and flow but not enough where it would go into the armor pieces. But it was still a challenge having to rotate the model into every single possible angle I could think of just to try to get my brush in there. Then apply some streaking grime for Panzer Grey, ensuring I get into all of the parts as usual. I definitely knew I wanted to use streaking grime from the beginning as it is definitely the easiest way to paint white. I tried sponging off some of the streaking grime but I realized I left it on for a little bit too long and I was going to scratch the paint so I grabbed some odorless thinner and I got to cleaning with a q-tip. Essentially soaking the model first and then beginning to clean it off. I sometimes get asked uh, how do I prevent uh, little hairs from the q-tip from getting on the model and reality is you can't. It's one of those things where you just got to accept it. You could try using a sponge later on to essentially sponge off some of the fibers and that does help. Once everything was cleaned off, I grabbed the previous highlight that we made and I started doing essentially these small edge highlights and also tiny little scratches in the armor. I didn't try to edge highlight every single area, just the easiest parts that were the most accessible where I could just use the side of the brush without trying to do anything crazy. For these scratchy highlights, I just picked an angle and just went for it, trying to imagine where like stray bullets would hit essentially. Then going back in with the exact same highlight for the skin as previous and just giving it a bit more depth to it. I almost forgot to mention actually I did varnish the model after using this streaking grime. Then I grabbed some pure white and just highlighted the exact same parts of the armor as I'm doing for the blue just with the white. Going for the simplest edge highlights where I can just use the side of the brush to essentially go over the armor. I decided to also edge highlight a bit of the weapon, mostly the right side but a tiny little bit on the left side as well and then I applied a tiny bit of white to the shoulder as well. And our little white towel dude was done. Now, having just painted these white towel again, yeah, uh, I'll be honest, even though I have experience painting white, it's still a frustrating experience, uh, genuinely. Like, if I had to paint a whole unit of these guys, 
I, I don't think I, I would have a good time at all. I, I think I would have to take a very long break after every single unit and do something I actually enjoy much more. For this next color scheme, I decided to go for a bit more of a realistic army type of towel. This was also the one I intended to be the easiest to paint, so I started off by just dry brushing on some rubber black, and then adding on a tiny bit of white, and then just working up as highlights. Using my homemade dry brush palette just to see how much paint I actually have on the brush. I tried to slowly transition between these colors to essentially have a smoother gradient between the colors. Each time, I'm trying to make sure that the brush is a little bit less wet, so that the essentially the earlier dry brushes applies a lot more paint than previous. And then for the final one, I'm just brushing off as much as possible to ensure I have those really nice crispy lines for the edge highlights. I personally prefer to take my time and just transition through these colors, but if you, for example, wanted to paint an extremely large quantity of these, you could theoretically cut down some of the colors to essentially have a quicker time between each unit. I knew I was going to be using an acrylic wash later on, so I made sure I pushed the color slightly brighter than I actually wanted. Then for my second color, I used AK Camouflage Green, which I'll be honest, I mainly picked because of the word camouflage in it. <laughs> I decided to apply it in the exact same areas as the white blue towel, but ironically, I made the exact same mistake where I kept thinking that I was going to keep only the lower part of the shoulders green. But then later on, I decided, you know what? No, I'll do the exact same thing as the model was looking a little bit too gray. And I knew I wanted a lot of the green in the model, but at the same time, the more green I have, the more interesting it's going to look. My paint is relatively thin, but I am applying only a single coat this time. Applying a second one makes absolutely no sense for me in this case, as I'll be applying a few additional highlights, as well as the acrylic wash will really smooth it out for me. Not to mention that the color has really good transparency, and if you're doing an army painting, doing multiple coats over the exact same area multiple times will just, uh, it's not a realistic thing to ask of someone. Then I just added a tiny bit of white to the color, giving us this really nice looking ice yellow highlight. For the highlight placements, I'm going for the exact same thing as the white blue, but at the same time, I'm working with a much bigger brush, so I have much dirtier, less clean, sharper edges. In this case, the brush I'm using actually had a bit of super glue inside of it, so it's not as, you know, pristine as you, you would expect. But I'm applying the exact same technique and just using the side of the brush to ensure I have much cleaner and easier sharper lines. Since I did apply only a single coat, I went back for these horizontal little highlights to essentially cover up some of the paint that was missing. Also providing a lot more visual interest and it's something that's very quick to do. To make the model pop even more, I added a tiny bit more white to it and it went over just a slightly few little areas that I thought would pop much better. I did not go over every single part, just a few little dots here and then just to make it more interesting. I also realized that I forgot to highlight the backpack, so I added a bit of that there. At this point, I really enjoyed the model, so I decided, you know what, I'll just add a few little more tiny highlights to the lower little place that I otherwise was going to ignore because they're not really noticeable most of the time. For the skin color, I'm doing the exact same thing of just applying some Luftwaffe. This time, I'll not be doing any highlights, I just want to do a single nice layer of Luftwaffe and then just apply some grim black wash that will essentially be doing the entire model. Unfortunately, I did not record me making the wash, but it's a very simple recipe. It's speed paint grim black that we used previously for the white towel, mixed in 1 to 3 with Liquitex Flow Improver. And then I decided to use metal color seal for the metal parts. Now, for the wash, one more thing I really want to mention is that when you're applying the wash, don't just slap it on and leave it there. Make sure you drag your brush along the flat surfaces to make sure there's no essentially staining effect left behind. Flow Improver goes a long way, but if you help the paint go away from the flat surfaces, you'll just have a better time. Then using a bit of AK Deep Red for the lens. Red is a phenomenal highlight for the green, so it just makes the model pop even more. Then I grabbed a tiny bit of a sponge, applied a little bit of black paint to it, dabbed off most of the moisture to ensure that it was nice and dry, and applied some of this weathering effect. This is quite opposite of painting with a sponge, where there you want it really damp, here you want it very, very dry. The drier it is, the cleaner your lines will apply. At least that's where I personally found. And a little green dude was done! Now, see, this color scheme is, this is what I'm talking about. This was so much more enjoyable because not having to deal with white, 
Even if I make a tiny mistake, I'm easily able to correct it. I'm easily able to compensate it. I don't feel frustrated working with this color. And frankly, I almost even like it more. If I was starting right now, or if I had to paint a big army, this is the color scheme I would choose. Next up, it was time for the far side and clay. Here I'm doing something similar, but instead of using white for the highlight, I'm using warm gray and just beginning my dry brushing. This is an example I was talking about previously where I essentially just applied the entire thing in one single coat, not going in for any transition between the colors. It's a bit less clean, but it's much faster. And then for the base coat, I decided to go for wine red, mixing that in with a tiny bit of black. Since the model is going to be red and there's going to be a lot of warm colors onto it, I decided to use a very cold looking red. Since I thought it was going to create a really cool, interesting effect. Unlike with the previous color schemes, I decided to go for something much simpler, just painting every single piece of the armor in this wine red. I'll be honest, I did not actually look up the proper color scheme for the Fireside Enclave and just tried doing it off memory, which I ended up making a smart life mistake. Once the base coat was applied, I went back in with just pure wine red. Here I'm essentially trying to cover most of the armor that I painted, but not trying to go as far into the deeper shadows as I did with the previous color. Trying to leave just a slight little parts of the model that still have the very dark looking wine red underneath it. Then mixing in some cadmium red, which I actually mixed a little bit too much, so I went back in with a little bit more wine red. For now, I'm focusing less on edge highlights, and I'm just trying to create these much more interesting panel colors. Since the acrylic wash will really dull these colors down, I want to have this very interesting, more gradual transition between them. As all the cloth elements were very quick to paint, I decided to spend a lot more time that I gained from that onto the armor. Once again, I'm doing very dirty lines because my thought process behind this is if I leave a lot of these little mistakes, then I'll actually have a lot more of the previous color shining through, creating a much more visually interesting uh, effect. And then just mixing in some more cadmium orange in there. Doing the exact same thing as previously, but just applying a bit less area and starting to apply a few edge highlights here and there just to see how they look. Red is also a very transparent color, even if we add a lot more orange to it, which technically speaking is even more transparent. So uh, in this step, I really have to do a lot of secondary passes on the armor just to ensure the fact that the color is going to be well saturated and has a very bright, nice looking color. Then going back in with just pure cadmium red. I'm just kidding. I changed my mind. I decided to add a little bit of more red to it. <laughs> I wasn't ready for pure cadmium orange just yet. I'll be saving that for later after the wash. I'm beginning to apply all the edge highlights, but I'm also painting a bit more of the panel lines because this is technically slightly different from the way I was painting all the previous models where there was mainly focusing just on a few edge highlights. Here I'm also creating these much more interesting gradients on the actual panel lines themselves. I am also using a much smaller brush that has much cleaner, sharper lines. For the face, I'm doing the exact same thing, but I'm also mixing in a bit of lilac. I have no idea how to say that. Interesting, apparently lilac is a type of flower, which I'll be honest, looks absolutely nothing like the paint. Here, mixed in lilac to Luftwaffe, about like two to one. I'm painting the face more of in a tabletop standard where I'm expecting, you know, someone to be looking at this model from far away. So the face, I'm not concerned about if it looks good or not. I just want some really nice, good contrast. That'll just look good from far away. Then I wanted to add a bit of quick OSL to this little scanner. So I decided to airbrush on some frog green from AK Interactive. Then adding a bit of white to that mix and creating these little dots in the scanner as if he's detecting some live signs right up ahead of him. Then adding this white ring around the scanner to symbolize the fact that it's glowing very bright. And then I'm brushing some frog green on top of that to just smooth the transition between those colors. For the metal, I was quite lazy and decided to use this AK bronze, which frankly was a massive, massive mistake as the paint was just applying like a typical metallic wear. I was scratching it on to the best of my abilities, and then when I would dilute it, it would just be too thin. Also, looking it on later on, I do realize that I made a mistake, and Farsight actually has steel colored rather than gold. And in this step, I'm applying the acrylic wash from all the previous um, versions of the towel that we did. And now I'm finally going back in with that cadmium red on its own, doing these final edge highlights that I know will just make the model really pop. Since the wash had a very strong blue tint to it, 
uh, it slightly cooled down the red more than I wanted. So I decided to go over every single part of the panel that I previously did with this cadmium orange, which frankly created a really awesome effect because small parts of the wine red essentially turned almost purple. Then I based the model using the exact same AK dark mud that I did for all the previous models. Slapping on a tiny little tuft and our little dude was done. And I actually enjoyed painting their sparse side fire warrior. Wow, that's a mouthful. So much, I actually ordered a far side for myself earlier this week after finishing the model and yeah I, it's one of these examples where just because you had a horrible experience with the model and you didn't like it and you just didn't enjoy it right away maybe trying it in an alternative color scheme and doing something different with it can actually make you really enjoy the model and appreciate the design behind the model and understand the fact that maybe just because something looks good in a particular way it's not guaranteed to be a good experience painting it. Consider the fact that maybe you want a color scheme that will benefit you as a painter, as well as benefit you mentally by the time you actually finish painting it. If you enjoy irony, then this is a gift I got. I was less than excited to say the least, but hey, the terrain, awesome. Hey, and thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed some of these. And if you'd like to check out any of their videos, that would help me out a lot. Thanks.